now we are coming to a very important topic that is application of gauss theorem every student of physics has to understand gauss theorem very well and how it is to be applied that is more important because most of the questions either in class 12 or in competitive or in college or for any principal are based around it that whether you can apply gauss theorem finally so you must understand it how we apply gauss theorem first thing where to apply why to apply the answer is gauss theorem is this and there are certain quantities one is charge epsilon not theta ds area and electric field in any equation of mathematics we know we can always find out one quantity if other quantities are given to us so this is like that this is an equation here 1 upon epsilon not epsilon not value is known to us and we can use this formula for finding out electric field if we want to find out electric field then we should ascertain how much is the charge how much is the area and what is the angle between electric field and area vector then we can find out electric field so we apply gauss theorem to find out electric field for different charge distributions what is different charge distributions we have seen earlier it may be a point charge or the complete charge is distributed over a line a complete charge is distributed over a sheet a complete charge is distributed over a sphere there may be many types of charge distributions and for every charge distribution electric field may be different because of the different distances and different quantities so by our ordinary method of coulomb's law that e is equal to q upon r square it becomes very difficult to sum up to find out electric field so we use a relatively easier method which is a gauss theorem initially you may find it that it is a bit long but once you are used to it you see we will are going to do at least 6 to 7 derivations using this uh, method of gauss theorem by the time we are doing one or two after that you will also become very fast doing in that or you will be doing it yourself and that is what an examiner wants to check he will give you a different situation and find out whether you can apply gauss theorem yourself or you simply go by what you have learned in the class so try to imbibe the method and i will tell you i will give you notes for different steps those steps are to be applied and with that you can always use it okay so i will tell you the steps by using one example the simplest example is there is a point charge there is a particle point size and it has got certain charge q because of this i want to find out electric field at this point p and this point p is at a distance r i have to find out electric field at this point okay what are the given quantities a charge q distance r these are the two quantities and what i am supposed to find out e and what i want to use is gauss theorem now how we apply the gauss theorem i will write steps here these steps you are not supposed to write in the examination this is for your learning process step number 1 consider a gaussian surface we must write what is meant by a gaussian surface consider a gaussian surface and now it's very important to understand that what is the nature of a gaussian surface okay gaussian surface has got certain properties a it is closed 
from all sides no opening b e at every point is symmetrical c theta at every point is symmetrical then we will consider we will consider it as a gaussian surface may be a combination may be a combination of more than one surface okay now these examples i will show you this is a charge and i want to consider a gaussian surface the key point of all this gaussian surface is symmetry symmetry is the key point of a gaussian surface now a gaussian surface should contain certain charge okay so if charge is there i will consider i will imagine a gaussian surface around this charge okay if i want to make a gaussian surface symmetrical then the best symmetrical surface is a sphere so now we will make a symmetrical surface around q and the best symmetrical surface is a sphere so i make a sphere here now this is e where is this e the answer is electric field is striking the surface so if i want to find out e at this point then the surface of my gaussian surface should be here so from here the gaussian surface should pass for the symmetry i want a sphere so i make a sphere here like this now if this is a sphere c this sphere i consider it as gaussian surface why i tell you number 1 it is closed correct number 2 e at every point is symmetrical the formula for e is q upon r square this you know now this is r this is also r same this is also r same this is also r same if r is same at all the points q is same at all the points then electric field at every point will be same symmetry that is why whatever distance we take on this side the same distance we take on this side so that e remain symmetrical so e we have made symmetrical by this method by taking it geometrically it is in the center now theta at every point is symmetrical what is the direction of electric field answer this is the direction of electric field what is the direction of area vector area vector this is the small area and this is area vector the angle is zero at this point at this point this is electric field electric field and this is the surface this is normal to the surface here again theta is equal to 0 here theta is equal to 0 so you find at every point of the sphere theta is 0 that is symmetric so this is a imaginary sphere imaginary remember it imaginary sphere it is fulfilling my condition that it is closed e at every point is symmetrical theta at every point is symmetrical if if it would have not been a single surface and it will not be possible for me to find such a surface which has e at every point then i will divide my given surface my imagined surface into two parts like 
Sometimes I will consider cylinder as a Gaussian surface and this curved surface is having one value of E and this plane surface will have another value of E. So I will add up later on the flux. But if it is not at all possible to have symmetrical E for all, I can divide my surface into two parts and I will do calculation for two parts which we will see in other applications. But in this given application only one surface is sufficient. So this is my step one. Consider a Gaussian surface. Now when I have considered this Gaussian surface I will write what I am supposed to write in my answer book. I will write we have taken a sphere of radius r with q as center so, so that point p is on the surface of Gaussian surface. This I am supposed to write here. So that is my step 1 and here written p. Now if I have considered this as Gaussian surface, I must give the properties of the Gaussian surface like this. So I continue this. I continue this at every point theta is 0 and if it is 0, it is symmetrical. Symmetrical. So my purpose is done. I have explained in writing that my Gaussian surface has a shape of sphere. It is closed. E at every point is symmetrical and theta at every point is symmetrical. This is part what I am going to write. This I am not going to write. This is just for your explanation. So this is the first part I will write. Now what is the second part we have to do? That I will tell you in step number 2. Now we go for step number 2 and what is step number 2? Step 2 is calculate this closed integral E dot ds. This is left hand side. Okay. So this is for your guidance step number 2 and here we will write. What do we write? The first you have already written. I have rubbed it. Now the second step you will write E ds cos theta is equal to E at every point is same because r is same. This we have already mentioned. So this is constant for every point. This comes out of integration. Theta. At this point theta is 0. At this point again theta is 0. At every point theta is 0. So this is also a constant and it will come out and cos 0 is equal to 1. So that we will make it 1. In any case it will come out. Then integration is to be done for ds only and this will be e into the complete surface is 4 pi r square. Now integration is done. This is left hand side eds is done. Okay. Then third step. This step 2 is done. Step 3. So calculate charge within the surface. We will write here our third step in reply to this charge within closed surface. Is how much? Here we have placed Q, so charge is Q, no calculation is required. Okay, this is our third step done. Step 4. Step 4. Apply 
apply Gauss theorem, put values and with that what we do? We calculate E and this is our last step which will, we will achieve in step 4. So that we will do here now. One we have already written, this was 2, this was 3 and now step number 4 which says apply Gauss theorem. So I write here according to Gauss theorem closed integral EDS closed integral EDS is equal to Q upon epsilon naught. Okay. Then I will write putting values putting values. Okay. EDS cos theta our value was E 4 pi r square. So on this side I will write E 4 pi r square. E 4 pi r square is equal to how much is the Q? The Q is Q upon epsilon naught upon epsilon naught. And with this we want to find out only E. So I find out E is equal to this 4 pi r square will transfer here and what I get here is E is equal to E is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught or let me write it first this way Q upon this 4 pi r square will go here 4 pi r square Q upon epsilon naught and now I simplify it 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught Q upon R square. This is electric field where? On the surface and where is the point P? On the surface. So this is electric field at point P. This is how we find electric field at any point which is at a distance R from the charge. So this is application of Gauss theorem and you have seen the four steps. These four steps now we will apply for more complicated situations. Okay? And one by one you will learn all the situations where we can find out electric field. Next we will take if the charge is distributed on a straight line, a very long straight line infinitely, then how much is the electric field at a distance r from here? This makes electric field here, this makes electric field here. So what is the net electric field at this and see how beautifully we apply Gauss theorem in that. That will be in the next lecture.